I am a woman, created to serve and to be served. I am a woman who loves and loves to be loved. I have lifted the chains of silent prejudice. I am free from the preconceived notions of taboo. I am a woman who loves and loves to be loved. I am a woman born to enjoy man. And only the sensuous woman I have become truly can. I have discovered the wondrous feminine potential of my own body. Transformed myself into a sought-after, desired, beautifully fulfilled creature. Come, share this exciting intimacy from the very beginning. Enter into a world of perpetual delight, enriched by a joyous and fulfilling sex life. I am a woman, a sensuous woman, without those preconceived notions that have been stumbling blocks to my own sensuality. I have learned to make use of all my body in total preparations for making love. The heightened appetite and sensitivity, the desire to give, but most important, I have gained the ultimate knowledge of my own sexual skills. To become aware of my own sensuality I first become fully aware of my own tactile sense. In dim light, I close my eyes and remove my clothes. I begin my imaginary trip with a strip of velvet ribbon or a soft fur. I draw the material slowly up the palm, the wrist, the inside of the arm to the neck, the cheek, across my eyelids, down my shoulders, and across the nipples of my breast. They grow hard as I touch them. I feel feminine. My body responds warmly, the heat of expectancy enveloping all of me. Moist, my skin is prickly with dew. A feeling of freedom oozes into my bare body. I pour a tiny pool of my favorite lotion between my breasts and stomach, and with delicate firmness, I massage the liquid into my warm and thirsty skin, luxuriating in the sensation of my hands, tending to the curves and mounds of my supple body. I have begun to experience the ecstasy of touch. Now I will begin to explore the fantasies of taste. The tongue is the consummate instrument of pleasure. To increase its flexibility, its allure, its potency as a lethal weapon of lovemaking. I exercise it, as I would any other part of my body. I practice my technique using a prop, a double-dip ice cream cone. It's delicious. I make circles and swift patterns with my tongue thrust into the ice cream. I lap it delicately like a kitten with milk. I put all my mouth over the ball of ice cream sliding my tongue down until my lips touch the cone. Then I slowly withdraw until the creamy rivulets start dripping and I can catch the drops on the very tip of my tongue. The organ is at my command. I am prepared to awaken my body fully. By increasing the tone of my love muscles, my body coordinates its responses fully on demand thus creating the ultimate unbridled sexual satisfaction, orgasm. For this, I teach another organ to respond more fully. Masturbation is a sweet and necessary physical endeavor, a self-induced experience that deepens and prolongs the pleasure that's the basis for full sexual stimulation. I've learned from masturbation to have several orgasms with my partner in the time it first took me to feel only the initial glow of arousal. I pick a time when I'm assured of lengthy privacy. I remove my clothes and sprawl on my bed. I close my eyes, letting my own fingers explore my sensitive areas, questioning. The head of my clitoris is ultra-sensitive. Mm but there begins to be a warm feeling. It prickles when I rub the shaft and the soft flaps of skin beside it. 
Does it feel better on the right side or left side? No, both sides feel ah uh, so good. The whole area begins to feel tingly. The lips, these other lips, expand and become firm as the lubricant is massaged into them. Lying quietly, my eyes closed, I let my imagination escape all bounds. No social conformity is imposed inside my mind. I indulge in the wildest of fantasies, letting my mind float freely on someone who excites me. I imagine someone looking at me stretched out naked on my bed, my body open and hungry for him. I feel him caressing my breasts, running his hands down and over my abdomen, stroking the inside of my thighs, reaching higher and teasing my clitoris with a touch. In my fantasy, I lie on black silk sheets, my body curves and writhes towards his. My fingers become his fingers. My nipples, touched ever so lightly, become erect. The man of my fantasies now rules my mind, my body. I imagine more as he mounts me. Fingers become his penis, thrusting deep into me, while my pelvis arches up to him for him, eager, ready. I'm ready. The in and out movement makes my body writhe, harder, harder. The tempo increases. Control becomes unbearable. The heat flashes out more and more. My vagina contracts and dilates and contracts. It desires more, but I moan in protest of ecstasy. Then, then when it cannot be held back, I can stand it no longer. The final thrust. I explode into flaring pieces. My thighs stiffen. I am suffused by feeling. Slowly, reality floats down and returns. His penis becomes my fingers again. I am satisfied. No two women masturbate exactly alike. Each must find and develop her own variation for ultimate pleasure. There shouldn't be great difficulty achieving orgasm, but I do admit a vibrator works wonders. I use a battery-operated one, shaped like a penis. It's so effective and slips right into my vagina. It spreads wiggling, throbbing sensations through my body. Although I'm spoiled by the vibrator, I learn to manipulate my fingers because I teach myself a higher plateau of sensitivity. With my hands, I discover shadings of sensations that can never be merely mechanical. I school my sexual cravings and learn to understand its many moods because it gives me the impetus to explore my man's body with my own. Now both my body and my mind are rehearsed to their full sense of erotic delight. I most want the man who is stimulated by the vision of me, powdered, perfumed, and unashamedly naked. The body of woman is beautiful, and my own is supple and soft. The best thing I can sleep in is my very own skin. Why do I spend so much time telling you this? Nearly all men are polygamous by nature. His natural instinct has nothing to do with the fact that he may love me very much. I've learned to keep him off guard. He's curious about what I'll do next, so his attention is focused on me. He doesn't stray far. I remember when I greeted him in a French maid's costume. I kissed him sensuously on the ear as I served his drink. As I served dinner, bending over him with the serving tray... My loose breasts brushed against his face. The warmth of my body brought forth the perfume I'd splashed there. He threw aside the food, and in an aroused sexual frenzy pushed me onto the table. Glasses, silverware, and platters slid aside. My protests were of no avail. He mounted me, driven by my illusory and erotic performance. Unmercifully, he pumped me until both of us caught up and spinning came together and climbed upward until that final spasm of earthquake that convulsed us 
and threw us back pleasurably to the ground. Without even knowing it, a man gives me a lot of clues to his sensuality. For example, the eyes are very revealing and at the same time misleading. Before I allowed myself to be swept away by one velvety pair of browns, I observed how he used them. His eyes caressed and undressed me. Mm. That was a good sign. After the initial meeting, I can hardly help but pay attention to how he kisses me. Men who are good lovers invariably use their tongues imaginatively in these preliminary kissing stages. Then I notice his caresses. Do I tingle and feel warm all over? It will be even better later when I have my clothes off. I must please him, yes. But oh, so important. Please myself, too. Pleasing him, I conjure up a most pleasurable excitement on the last threshold to enchantment as I prepare to drive my man frantically to ecstasy with a love that's uninhibited and harmonious. I have mastered the basic moves of the art of love. Most women fail to realize that a man's body is covered with areas that are potential hotbeds of erotic response. Most men have either a partial or full nipple erection. Their breasts are as erotically responsive as a woman's. The tip of the tongue touching the nipple is as desirable for him as for me. Each male is a sexual original. I bite them softly on the buttock, lick the crack, circle the inside of their ear with my tongue, whisper the most vivid pictures of pleasure to create a continuing communication of erotic stimuli. At the start of the kiss, I let my lips go almost limp. I part my teeth slightly so that my teasing tongue may easily enter his mouth. I touch my lips lightly and quickly on his eyes, nose, forehead, hair, chin, and back to his mouth. Pulling the right side of his upper lip into my mouth, then the whole lower lip, I make a gentle sucking motion. I run my tongue across his front teeth, his gums, around and down inside his lips, and then I let myself be swept deliciously into a deep kiss again. Probing deep into his mouth, darting under, over, and around his tongue, I notice new strength as I draw his tongue into my mouth. I cup his ear in my hand and blow soft, hot breath into it. Moist, but not wet, my tongue beckons him to my entering place. Lingeringly, I move down to his chest. My hands make a cave over one nipple. My tongue touches its erect tip. I bare my teeth and pretend to bite. But I don't. I touch my teeth to the side of the nipple and slide them back and forth. He cannot stay indifferent with a mouth like mine, tantalizing and calling him. And as I kiss him, I become aroused. My body begins to wiggle. He becomes fascinated with the desire to discover how his penis would feel embedded in the center of that rhythmic gyration. I lie on my back weight resting on my shoulders and arms. I lift my hips off the bed and make imaginary designs with my body. Circles clockwise and counterclockwise. A figure eight, a square. I let my buttock muscles push my pelvic area up and back down again. Up and down, up and down. Thinking of what his penis will feel like deep within me as I move the thought of sensations I'm giving him. Now I suck in my vagina muscles as if I were trying to imprison his penis. Relaxing, constricting, relaxing again, I entice his penis to throb and hunger for my depths. The center of the universe is my pulsating and maddening vagina. My increased flexibility allows me to find maximum clitoral stimulation. And now, as I become more involved in lovemaking, I discover I want to reciprocate that oral loving he gave to me.
I discover it is normal to desire this. I use my newfound skills for this basic oral technique. I gently press the man to lie on his back, and I kneel at his side, my knees at right angles to his hips. Or I lie beside his thigh. I take the penis gently into the palm of my hand. My strong, wet tongue slides around the head of the penis until it glistens with moisture. I slick my lips with my tongue, then stretch my mouth wide. My lips cover my teeth and curl under and over the tops of both rows. I remember, the covered teeth are smooth, hard ridges to caress the very, very tender penis. I must avoid nicking or scratching, for I create sensation of pleasure in this achingly responsive organ. I take the penis and suck it into my mouth, slowly moving my mouth down to the base and then back up to the head again. I experiment to discover what speed of manipulation is preferred. The slow and steady in and out stroke, strong quick strokes, or a combination of both. With this proficiency, I add the technique of the butterfly flick and silken swirl to my repertoire. One of the most arousing things I can do for a man is this butterfly flick. On the underside of the penis, actually the top side as the man is lying down and the penis stretches up towards him, is a subtle ridge called the corona. Just underneath this is the most sensitive area of a man's body. To drive him straight to ecstasy, my tongue flicks lightly back and forth across this membrane. Now I run my tongue down to the very base of the penis and back up again a few times and then return to the butterfly flick. Only this time, I flick up and down the underside of the penis. I do it a little harder, a little faster, in quicker strokes. I continue until the man begs for mercy. Then I begin the sensuous silken swirl, continually circling the penis clockwise or counterclockwise with my tongue. I still slide the thoroughly slippery penis in and out of my mouth. I may decide to use another device, and some men are particularly fond of this. The Hoover, my affectionate name for this, I use first if they've not yet obtained full erection. In this one, I pretend my mouth is a tiny vacuum cleaner. It sucks the penis into my mouth of its own accord. Halfway the penis goes in, then still exerting the vacuum pressure, I slowly start to slide the penis from my mouth. I am very careful with this double pulling action. My own excitement gives me too much energy. To divert my own attention, and because I love sweet things, I take some freshly whipped cream and add a dash of vanilla and some powdered sugar. I spread my concoction evenly on the penis so that the whole area is covered with a thin layer of cream. It is cool and cold on his genitals. I sprinkle on a little shredded coconut and then lap it all up with my tongue. My mouth is hot on the cream. He writhes with a tortured delight that brings him to full eroticism and a dynamic burst of orgasm. 